what is your favorite holiday tradition? When I have a worry-filled mind I like to wander outside No telling what we might find Birds calling, worms crawling Leaves falling down from above I plant my feet on the ground I keep my head in the clouds I let my feelings out loud I hear joy calling Fear crawling Tears falling down Out of love Welcome my name is Mrs. A, if you don't already know, and I'm really glad that you decided to join me today. Anytime we have a lesson or video together, we start off with a feelings check-in. And there are a couple different ways that we can notice and name and share or communicate our feelings. And so we practice a couple different ways each time. Today, I'm going to ask you to look at this poster of feelings or emotions that I've made. And while it doesn't include every single feeling that you could feel, it includes a lot of them. And it's important that we as humans practice noticing and naming the feelings we experience because there are so many different types and sometimes it's hard to figure out which is which. And other times we're not quite sure the best way to communicate or share our feelings. And so a really helpful way to start is just by naming them. So I'm gonna ask you to look really closely at this poster. Really pay attention to the faces. Now, the shade of the skin or the hairstyle might be different than yours, but the expression that, that the character is making, the way their mouth is shaped, or the way their eyes are drawn, or the way their eyebrows are bent, may match how you're feeling right now. Sometimes it's even helpful to look in a mirror and see, hmm, how am I feeling? What emotion am I showing? Or what message is my body sending? So let's look at these characters on this feelings poster and do our best to name our feeling or emotion right now. Our feeling may be different later. We may have been feeling different earlier. I want us to practice just naming what we're feeling in this moment. Let's give it a shot. Did you find your feeling? Great, I found mine too. Like I said, it's a really great practice to say our feelings out loud and just say the name of them. Now, if you're not sure the name that it says on the feelings chart there, if you can ask a grown up or someone nearby to help you, or just do your best to sound it out. Let's say the name of our feeling on my countdown. Ready? Three, two, one. Happy! <laughs> do you notice that I have a smile on my face? similar to the person with the hijab. My eyebrows are raised a little bit just like theirs are. I'm feeling really happy right now. Thank you so much for sharing your feeling with me and for sharing your feeling with yourself. Saying a feeling out loud helps your own brain and body understand you better and helps you feel more comfortable and more settled. It's pretty amazing. Another thing that can often help our brains and bodies feel more settled is exercising or moving in some way. Now there are so many different ways that you can move your body that feel good for you. And when we're together, we try out a bunch of different exercises and we use the date and our friend Fig to help us. So let's check the date. As a reminder, the date for me may be different than the date for you, and that's okay. Right now, the date is five slash two slash 22 and it is a brand new month. Last time I shared a video, it was the month of April, the fourth month. Now it's the fifth month, the month of May. And maybe you have a May birthday or somebody really special to you has a birthday in May. I wanna take just a moment to celebrate you or to celebrate them. So happy birthday to all my friends with a May birthday out there. Now, like I said, our friend Fig helps us out with some of these moves. So let's check in with them. 
let's see if we have any guesses as to what exercise they're showing us. Wow, this one looks tricky. Imagine they are kind of floating in the air, so maybe jumping in some way. Notice how their arms are and their legs. It looks like they're using a lot of different muscles. We'll do their move in just a little bit. But to start us off, I thought we could do five head rolls. Now, like I said, May is the fifth month. And so we are going to use that number five to help us. And we're going to count by ones as we do our head rolls. Let's do it. One, two, three, four, five. Is your head and neck feeling nice and loose? Mine is too. Now we have Fig's moves, and we are going to do two of them. And Fig is showing us a jump squat. My word, that is tricky. Did anyone guess that? <laughs> Me neither. I think this is maybe the first time we've done jump squats. So what we'll need to do is stand up if we're able and we're gonna get down and low squat. We've done those before. And then we're gonna jump up. Now you may jump really high or you may jump really low. You'll notice I cannot jump very high yet. I have to keep practicing. So let's do our jump squats. However is best for our body. Counting by twos because two is our number and two is even. So we like to challenge our brains, counting by twos when we have even numbers. Let's do two jump squats. Two. <laughs> awesome work. Now, the last move we're going to try is a punch up in the air. And as we do that, we'll kick our leg out. So I'm punching up with my right hand, and I'm kicking my right foot out, and then I'll punch up with my left hand and kick my left foot out. You can do this sitting if you'd like, but I think standing works best if you're able. Let's do 22 punches in the air. And we're gonna count by twos once more because 22 is an even number. Ready? Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22. Fantastic, friends. And finally, anytime we move our bodies, we always want to cool down and lower our heart rate back down. So when you hear a bell, you can breathe in big and then slowly let that air out. And you'll notice and start to feel how your heart rate starts to go slower. Let's breathe. Beautiful work moving your bodies and building your muscles with me today. So at the beginning of this episode, I asked if you had any favorite holiday traditions. And holiday traditions or birthday traditions are things that you do every year that are special to you or special or important to your family. For example, my birthday tradition is to take a hike every year on my birthday. I choose a special trail or a new park to visit and I go outside and spend some time in nature. And other traditions might include really big gatherings, being with your friends or family. Maybe you have a special dress or a fancy outfit that you like to wear. Or maybe you have a meal that is your absolute favorite thing to eat during a certain holiday or time of year. And there are a lot of different holiday traditions because there are a lot of different things that a lot of us like. And today, we're going to talk about a holiday that is being celebrated today and tomorrow, and we're going to read some books about some of the traditions or practices that people like to do every year in order to celebrate. Let's start by reading the message to find out a little bit more of what I'm talking about. Dear Delightful Friends, Do you remember when we learned about Ramadan last month? We learned that it's a special time for Muslims to fast, reflect, and practice generosity. We read some sweet books 
and heard that Ramadan is observed for an entire month. Whoa! Yesterday and today are actually the final days, and a big feast and celebration takes place in many families and Muslim communities. It's called Eid. Let's learn more about it together. Love, Mrs. A. So as I mentioned, there are so many different holidays and traditions that happen throughout the year. And Eid is happening today and tomorrow for our Muslim friends and families. And so we're going to learn a little bit more about it if we don't already know. Now, I have three books that I'm really excited to share with you. This first one is such a cool combination of cultures. And we'll actually hear just a few pages together. But it is about a girl who has a lot of different cultures and traditions in her family. And she also is learning a lot of different languages, one for each of her cultures. And so we're going to read Eid Breakfast at Abuela's. And Abuela is a way to say grandmother in Spanish. And this is written by Miriam Saab, with illustrations by Chaima Shabi. And I really, really love this story, so I'm excited to share some of it with you. Let's listen. My name is Sophia, and Ramadan this año was very special. Año is in green here, and that's because it is a word in a different language, in Spanish, that means year. It was the first time that I tried to fast. I drank agua and had some snacks in the morning and afternoon, and then fasted for the last two hours of each day. Agua is another way to say water. So, for Sophia, our character in this story, she's saying that this year Ramadan was really special because it's the first year she tried to fast. And you may remember that kids don't often fast the entire time that adults or grown-ups do. And Sophia looks pretty young, so that makes sense that she was trying it out for a couple hours each day. Very cool. Even though Mama's family does not celebrate Ramadan or Eid, my abuela prepared an Eid breakfast for Mama, Baba, and me for the first time. To get to Abuela's, we flew in an avion across the country. We left for the airport right after we broke our last fast. Now there's another Spanish word here, avion. Do you know what that word means? There are some clues if you're not sure. She said that they left for the airport and flew in one of these. What do you think it is? An airplane, yes. So she flew in an airplane to visit her abuela, her grandma. After we prayed and met our amigos at the mosque, we drove to abuela's for desayuno. So after she and her family and friends, amigos, prayed at the mosque, their special place of worship. She drove to her grandmother's for breakfast, desayuno. Clara, Ravmin, and Sofia, I have missed mis hijos. Abuela said this when we arrived at her casa. We each greeted her with a big hug and a kiss on the cheek. To my surprise, she had invited my tios, tias, and cousins all to enjoy an Eid breakfast with us. So her grandma, Abuela, invited her tios, her uncles, and her tias, her aunts, and all of her cousins to celebrate. And what I find most special about this story, besides having all of the different languages and words to learn, is that it's such a welcoming and inclusive story. Even though her mama and her abuela don't celebrate Ramadan or Eid, she wanted to make it special for Sophia and her family and include her baba or her papa. And so I love that there are people in our families and in our communities who want to get to know more about each other and celebrate each other on special and important days. And so this is a really beautiful story of Sophia and her family, and there's a lot more that happens in it. So be sure to check it out yourself. Eat breakfast at Abuelas. You'll also be able to learn so many words in Spanish and in Arabic. And in the back, they're all listed here. Super, super helpful. Now, this next book 
is also connected to this first one. And it's intergenerational, meaning that we'll see a character, a young girl, and her mom, and her grandma. And I love that connection between these two books, but this one is very different than the first. It's called Zara's New Eid Dress, and it's by Nafisa Abdul Rahim. And this makes me think of one of those traditions I mentioned earlier about how sometimes we have special outfits or fancy things to wear when we celebrate a holiday. Let's listen to some pages here. One year, Zara and her friend Sana were matching salwar kameez that Sana brought back from her visit to Pakistan. Last year, Zara decided she wanted to wear an abaya just like her friend Moura. However, this year for Eid, Zara wanted to wear a dress that was uniquely her own. She wanted something that showed her style, her heritage, a reflection of her culture as an African-American Muslim. And so I love that in years past, she matched her friends with their fancy outfits, and she was able to receive a gift of an outfit from Pakistan. And this year, she wants one that's all her own to match her own unique identity as an African-American Muslim. Zara and her mother went to several stores, but Zara could not find what she was looking for. At one store, she found a dress that was pink, but it had no flowers on it. At another store, Zara and her mother found a dress with flowers, but it was yellow instead of pink. Store after store, there would be dresses with only one or two of the things that Sarah was looking for in a dress. She became discouraged. That's one of the feelings on our poster. Maybe you saw it earlier. Then Zara's mother had an idea. I know. Why don't you ask your Nana to make you the perfect dress for Eid? When I was your age, she would make me the most beautiful Eid outfits. Zara liked that idea, and a smile came across her face as she imagined how beautiful her Eid dress would be. So we heard that Zara was feeling discouraged. Things weren't working out. She couldn't find a dress she was looking for. But then we heard that a big smile came across her face as she imagined a beautiful dress that her grandma would make. How do you think she's feeling now? Yeah, I agree. She's probably feeling happy or excited. She may be feeling hopeful and eager. Nice thinking. Once Zara and her mother returned from shopping, Zara quickly picked up the phone and dialed her grandmother. Assalamu alaikum, Nana, Zara said. Wa alaikum salam, Zara, replied her grandmother. Nana, I would like to have a special dress for Eid, but Umi and I can't find one at the store. Can you make one for me? asked Zara. Sure, I would love to, said her grandmother. What is it that you're looking for? asked her grandmother. I would like a dress that is bright, pink, fluffy, and has flowers on it, exclaimed Zara. Do you think her grandmother is going to be able to make her a dress that matches all of those requirements? Bright, pink, fluffy, and has flowers on it? Hmm. You'll have to grab this book, Zara's New Eid Dress, to find out. And as always, you can grab these books from your local library. That's where I get many of them. Or you can buy them from your local bookstore. That's where I get all my other books. And if you look at the link in the description, there's a bookshop link where you can find your own local bookstores to support and get these books from. So you can have them for your own libraries or share them with your friends and family. While you're down there peeking at that bookstore link, remember to hit that red subscribe button if you haven't already. Now, we have one final book to enjoy together, and this may be my favorite of them all, but it's a close tie because I do really like these others. This one is called Rashad's Ramadan and Eid al-Fatir, and it's by Lisa Ballard with illustrations by Holly Conger. And the reason I really enjoy this one is because it is so informative. Maybe you're thinking, um, I didn't learn about Ramadan yet, and I'm not sure exactly what that holiday means. There are different chapters in this book to help you learn more. Chapter one says, where's the moon? And the moon is a really important part of Ramadan and when it begins. Chapter two is thinking about Allah, and that is a really important practice for Muslims who celebrate Ramadan. 
Chapter three is thinking about other people. Maybe you heard in our message that when people are observing Ramadan, they practice generosity. And so chapter three tells us more about that. And then chapter four is a big celebration, and that is the celebration of Eid. And that is what we are going to read together today. Chapter four, a big celebration. Early in the mornings, I put on new clothes and shoes. We go to a big park with many other people. We all pray together. Many Muslims cover certain parts of their bodies in public. They dress this way to show respect to Allah. And Allah is another name for God. Dad says Muslims around the world have fun and feast for Eid. Sometimes there are carnival rides and games. We visit friends and family. People give me candy, presents, and money. Many Muslims take a day off of school or work for Eid. In some places, the celebration lasts for three whole days. It's a fun time, but it's also a time for giving thanks to Allah. And I see lots of celebrations here. I see friends sharing food. I see people playing games. Oh, I see some beautiful henna art. Oh, I see balloons and I see smiles and laughter. It looks like a really great celebration. I've decided I'm going to watch the moon all year. I know it will grow bigger and smaller many times, but finally it will be that special night again. It will be time for another Ramadan meal. Have you noticed how the moon changes? It grows big and small, and it changes a little bit every day. It goes through many cycles, about one every month. If you haven't studied the moon and its phases, I would encourage you to. Ramadan is connected to the moon, as I mentioned, but it's also really beautiful to notice the different patterns that the moon makes and get in sync with nature. And like I said, this book is very informative. I've learned a lot reading it. There's a glossary back here with a lot of words and how to pronounce them if you're not sure. And there's also a recipe for making a moon can. So be sure to check out Rashad's Ramadan and Eid al Fatir. Now, as I'm sure you've heard today and maybe even in our previous Ramadan episodes, the moon is a really important part of Ramadan and this holiday and celebration. And so for our mindful moment today, we're going to actually do something called a moon breath. And it's a really unique and interesting breathing activity. And it takes a little practice to figure out. So I'm going to show it to you and then we'll try it together for five breaths. And it's okay if you don't figure it out right away. You might have to try it a few times. But it is a really calming and soothing breathing activity that really helps make our bodies feel settled and peaceful. So here's what you need to do. Take your hand that you write with. So I use my right hand. And put your fingers on your forehead. Just the fingers in the middle of your hand. You can use all three or you can just use two. Whatever feels comfortable. And as you breathe in, you're going to put your thumb on your nose and just push in on one nostril and we'll breathe in on one side. And then as you breathe out, you're going to switch and put your ring finger on the other side of your nose and push on your nostril gently and breathe out. And like I said, it may feel tricky or confusing or strange at first, but the more you practice, the better you'll get. And I promise it feels really cool to breathe this moon breath. So let's try it out. Fingers on your forehead, thumb on your nose, pushing gently as we breathe in. And then switch and breathe out. You'll notice I'm trying to keep my mouth closed. Let's do it again. In, switch. Out, great job. Let's do three more. Remember the switch as you breathe in. Switch and breathe out. One 
amazing. Thank you for trying that moon breathing activity. What do you notice about your body? How are you feeling after giving that a try? Very neat. Yeah, it may have felt tricky on your hands. I know it did for me the first few times I was trying it. <laughs> it may have been difficult to figure out when to switch or when to push on your nose. I'm glad you gave it a shot. Friends, any time you are feeling like you're losing control or you're out of control, trying a mindfulness activity, one that we practice together, is a great way to help calm your body or clear your mind. And so if the moon breath worked well for your body and you feel comfortable doing it, give it a try anytime you might need to take a moment to yourself. If this one didn't really connect with you or felt too uncomfortable, that's okay. Go back and watch some of my previous episodes where you'll find different mindfulness activities at the end of each one. I'm sure you'll find one that works well for you. Now, before we go, I want to send you off with some love if you'd like it. A hug if you want it, and I can't wait to see you next time.